Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris. Today we're going to have a look at this, a Unity UT61E multimeter. This came from Banggood. They've contacted me and asked if I wanted to have a look at something and I thought this multimeter was quite of my interest. So they did send it to me. Let's have a look inside and see how it works, what the functions are and most importantly, what's the build quality inside. For those who are interested, I will post a link to this exact multimeter on Banggood website down in the description below the video. And one last thing before before we get to the actual review of the multimeter, I've got a favor to ask. First of all, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. The button is right there and you can click the little bell thing. If you have subscribed already to my channel, thank you, firstly. And secondly, please do share those videos on social media of your choice. Comment below the video, that really helps. I really want to grow this channel and reach a wider audience. But as you know, YouTube's discovery algorithms are somewhat peculiar. So without your help, I won't be able to do that. Like, comment and share. It doesn't cost anything. Now, let's get to this. And here it is. It's a Unity UT61E series multimeter. The exact model that we have is UT61E. There are, as you can see, five different variants of the UT61. And I think the E is the most interesting one. A little postal service quality check control over here, but that's okay. I guess it passed. Got a booklet in English, which is good. Unity is quite a good brand. I'm quite confident in the quality of this meter. We've got a little disc with some software. Now this meter comes with, oh, I thought it was USB. It's actually RS-232 and an adapter for data logging. I was hoping to test the software on this video, but I was expecting a USB plug, but we've got the RS-232. I know I have a RS-232 to USB adapter somewhere, but I suspect currently it might be quicker to order one from online then try to find it. Multimeter itself feels really nice, solid, nice rubber over mold. So it's, uh, yeah, it's not slippy, really nice grip in a hand. Pair of test probes with those plugs. I do not understand why do they put those plugs in here. Every time you buy a new multimeter, it's got those little things over here. I guess to stop stuff getting in here. But yeah, this goes straight to the bin because you just keep your probes plugged into the meter all the time. And we've got this. That is weird. This, I think, is a genuine mistake in the factory. There are a few different models of this meter, and this is the UT61E. And this little piece, what you are looking at, is an adapter for transistor tester and a K-type thermocouple. This multimeter does not do transistor testing, and it does not have temperature measurement. So I guess on somewhere on the production line, they just accidentally put this one in here thinking that this is a different model. UT61E multimeter is a 22,000 counts digital multimeter with true RMS. It's an auto-ranging multimeter. It has additional functions of hold relative measurements and peak detection, both minimum and maximum. We'll have a look at that. Yeah, it will measure volts, AC, DC, millivolts. So there's two separate ranges for volts and millivolts. Your usual beep, diode test, resistance measurement, capacitance, frequency and duty cycle, microamps, milliamps and amps. So I guess amps range is divided into three separate sections. Uh, here is, by the way, yeah, UT61A has got the transistor tester option. Low current measurements, not many multimeters do that and that's really handy in electronics because very often you're dealing with very small currents. This one here, UT61E, has got a range of 220 microamps with a resolution of 0.01 microamps or 10 nanoamps resolution, accuracy 0.5% plus 10 counts, 100 nanoamps plus half a percent of your total values. This will come really handy, it's a really unique feature of this multimeter, really low current measurement. Here is the data log port blanked out by a piece of plastic when not in use and then this plugs in it's optically isolated so this is done by just a photodiode and an infrared diode over here this is in case you poke your multimeter at something high voltage it goes horribly wrong at least your computer will be safe if you connect it to something you don't know what's the rating of the other equipment if it's safe to pass on high voltage the rotary switch feels quite nice it's very positive click and if we open it up yeah that's no problem doesn't fall over when switching it and the stand is quite good as well you yeah once the stand is up you will not tip this over to the back very wide and stable oh it calibrates 
Oh, that's interesting. So when you go into peak, you could see that in a, uh, a moment ago on the screen, it went into cal mode. The S symbol over here indicates that the data transfer is active. Relative measurements indicated with the triangle, the delta, and hold simply freezes the screen and big H indicates it's in the hold mode. It has got quite a good display. With the viewing angle is quite big. I can't see it whether either on the table like so or up on a stand it's readable in either position. The probes supplied with the meter, usual length I guess, shrouded banana plugs, okay sharp, pointy but not skin piercing pointy, partial shroud on the probe end, they are rated for two, up to 20 amps, cut 4 at 600 volts or cut 3 at 1000 volts. The cable itself though, it's although it feels nice, it feels like a quality multimeter probe cable, but it hasn't got any markings. Really soft and bendy. Uh, let's see how it beeps. I've noticed already that it has quite a pleasant beep. Beep mode using the blue button. It latches on quite well. It doesn't produce that hollow, horrible screech noise when there is a poor contact. So it either beeps or not rather quick. Sometimes I can get it to not register, but that is good. That is really good. Let's take it apart. One, two, and three screws. Positioned strangely, uh, not in corners, just in odd places. This, I think, is the battery screw. Yes, it is. It's a shame they haven't put metal insert into the plastic, but uh, all right. Okay, the meter comes with a battery. That means you can take it out of the box and start using it straight away. Heavy duty stuff, so yeah, I'm not, I will not be putting this back in. Battery case itself, and there is a slight problem here. So what you're meant to do is put the battery in like so into this and then put it into the meter. Because while in this holder, the battery will not fit incorrectly. You can see this is the right way. And if I try to turn it around, it just sticks out because those little cutouts here are just made the right size for the battery ends. The problem is, if you are not paying attention and you don't notice that this is where you put the battery in, you could attempt to stick the battery over here and it will make contact. I have previously come across a meter, it was a Mastec multimeter, where the battery was going straight in like so. By not being careful, I've inserted the battery backwards and I killed the meter, it let the smoke out instantly. Let's remove the two other screws. Even though those are self-tapping screws, as and you can see already it's chewing up the plastic, uh, they have got quite a bit of a bite, provided you're being careful when screwing them back in. So just unscrew it until you hear it fall into the groove previously carved into the plastic post. Those should last quite a long while. It just means that you have to pay a little bit more attention when screwing it back together. Not to try cut a new thread in the plastic every time you every time you screw it in and here we are let's have a look at how wide of this lip here is this is really good and um, it's a really good design feature that means that if this meter was to fail catastrophically and explode this is far better at containing the explosion inside because it has got that channel around and a big lip that overlaps abs plastic mold rubber over molding diode that sends the information out in the form of light pulses this is really interesting so check this out i was wondering before why has no meter got this feature and this is absolutely brilliant here and here are hrc fuses but what's so special about them those are bs in 62 at least if you're in uk those fuses are readily available at pretty much anywhere because those are the same fuses that are in a uk plug like this every uk plug is fused by default and there's a 13 amp fuse and the bs1362 defines the size of the fuse and it's also a high rupture capacity fuse hrc so those are really good fuses they are widely available at least in uk if you're not in uk then still even then they are a lot cheaper because they are being mass produced they are quite good at handling gross overloads so yeah brilliant I think that's a fantastic feature. A lot of meters have got some, you know, special busman or... The trouble comes when you're trying to replace it and you're looking high and low and you can't find one. The only place would be look online and get it delivered. It will take about a week or so. What do you do in the meantime? Right, you could put a piece of screw in there, but uh, yeah, it's... you get the idea. Those fuses are readily available and that's brilliant. Here we have some input protection. Those are PTCs um, and this is on the 
high voltage input side so this will go up to 1000 volts i guess a cutout in the board here we also have another cutout with a plastic lip that provides further isolation to prevent arcing over the high current section so the 10 amp range you can see this is the common terminal and goes through the resistor and through the fuse and straight to the 10 amp term terminal so it's a very short path here we have a interesting can there is a can and a whole row of capacitors right next to it i'm not sure what that is the little chip over here is a 4096 it's just a hex inverter from what i see they use it to drive the led and possibly to drive the big piezo sounder you can see there's two traces going right under it and let's see will it come out easily no there are still clips on the sides there's a little notch in here on both sides in the pcb and i guess that's meant for taking it out i'm trying to touch the board as little as possible because you know you can destroy the accuracy of the meter if you leave a lot of grease on the switch has got an interesting arrangement insert with carbon pads for the switches and the channels for the probe contacts which are by the way folded over pieces of metal I don't mind that because it's sitting in a plastic channel so it's being held in place quite positively and that shouldn't deteriorate shouldn't expand and shouldn't cause a bad contact I've just noticed that the top two screws that we took out are not actually holding the board down those are holding the display which is still held in place by this little plastic clip which we can try to take out yeah and that should reveal the display and the main processor excellent the display is connected to the board by the zebra strip and the brain operation is the cyrus tech es51922a which is no surprise a 22,000 count multimeter chipset and we can have a look at anything else that is interesting so we've got a few more cutouts here in the board analog devices ad737j and the 737 is the true rms to dc converter so it takes a ac signal ac value through the internal circuitry it converts it to dc output which then can be measured by the multimeter chipset this means that in this multimeter i can be quite confident that the rms value is accurate analog devices dedicated chip to do that the rms conversion is not happening internally in some chip that's chip on board blobbed with some resin i am really happy with that give me a at least a point of reference and help understanding of the rms measurement there is even available a 737 evaluation board which you can presumably order from somewhere or you can make one yourself and the little can what that is this is where that can is connected and as you can see all those traces go into those pins and i had a look at the data sheet and here is what's inside this section this is what's inside that can so those are just precision resistors 100 ohm 1k 10.01k 101k 1.111 meg those are the resistors used as a reference in a can shielded probably also on some special substrate those provide the accuracy of the multimeter that's quite nice i have not seen that before in any of my previous multimeters worryingly i do not see any diodes on the terminals of the battery board produced in 42nd week 2017 s3g those are rectifier diodes there is a few more on the other side so there's a couple of here one more here those are all over the place I've got a different battery to put back into the meter to replace this and let's put it back together and start using it this multimeter having seen what's it made out of and what components are inside that gives me very high confidence in the quality of the measurements of this so this will likely become my number one go-to multimeter for the foreseeable future in proceedings on this channel that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it again please remember to subscribe share and like those videos and for the time being take care